hair collab time for something very unusual. The Shining Spots Orchid or Ophiocladus spathulifera. But the Shining Spots Orchid because look at those leaves. They have a metallic feel about them. This care collab today is together with Suli Charon and What's Up Orchids. So thank you very much for clicking on this video. My care collab today will also not only comprise about how I take care of my orchid, but I need to repot it because I've got new growth. And this has been in a pot for quite some time and the roots are so funky. I wanted to showcase them during this care collab if you have never seen the roots on the Shining Spots Orchid or Osseocladus spathulifera. So let's get going, let's have a look see and see how my roots are doing because this one needs a repot. I don't want this growth to get all squeezed up against the pot. You can see that my pseudobulb has gotten really big the last one I grew. Unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to hold on to the leaves. Maybe that's a humidity thing. Maybe this is a quirk of the orchid. I don't know. But maybe we can find that out with the videos of Su Lee, Charon, and What's Up Orchids. But let's get repotting. I have to show you some funky roots. They remind me of the tendrils of a jellyfish. Super interesting. As you can see, as per usual, if you've been on my channel from the start, you know that I grow inorganic media as best and frequently as possible. And this is in Lekka and self-watering. This is a terrestrial orchid found in the northwestern part of Madagascar. We're back to my island in the sun. Found in Madagascar in sand. Can you believe it? Sandy dunes. So terrestrial equals semi-hydro. Never a problem with that. And if you would want to not use Lekka at all, then what you could do is use a cactus mix, but add a little bit more sand into that mix. If you're not into the Lekka self-watering or inorganic growing, that would work too. Just plain cactus mix and just a touch more sand to it. But look at these roots, aren't they amazing? I got my fern out of there as well, which is nice. This is just incredible. I always get one growth per year. I have not had mine bloom yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing the blooms, but look at them. How incredible is this? Like jellyfish tentacles, tendrils, I love them. I can see that it has not dumped the roots from the previous growth, which is nice. It has dumped two back here, maybe. Nope, they're still firm. It's just the tip has gone dry. That's probably because I stopped flushing it at some point, which is not a good thing. Once you're in Lekka and self-watering, it is not a one-stop shop. It has to be a continuous maintenance of flushing. The reason I say about the flushing is I probably stopped because this one grows in sandy dunes along the northwestern side of Madagascar. 30 meters to 900 meters of elevation. Those are some major dunes, I would say, but it's more of a sandy substrate. If you're using a sandy mix, a cactus mix, it's much more dense than what you see with the sphere packing that happens with Lekka. There's a lot of oxygen in and around the roots. But that would work as well if you're not into inorganic growing. So, and then 30 meters, 900 meters elevation. That is a hot grower. With my Lekka, I have the side effect of evaporative cooling and I don't have the temperatures in my winters to accommodate this orchid because my winters can drop down to 14 degrees Celsius, which I had this past January in my dining room where the orchid lives under blurple lights directly. So in my thinking, I probably didn't flush enough because I didn't want to ruin the roots with too much of the cool effect around the roots. Having said that, I have forfeited root tips. What I'm not going to do now is cut the dead root tips off. 
I did that last time I repotted her. I cut the root tips off, but that caused the entire root to fail, all of it. You can see it is not a branching root system. So there were, there's not much chopping going on in this repot at all. I want to maintain the roots it has, the ones that are a little bit brown that you can see. This one has desiccated all the way back to here, but there it is firm. And I'm gonna maintain this because the climate of the pot, even for the next two or three years, is not going to be affected by the root stock at all. So I'm gonna be a little bit more careful and keep the roots that I have. And while I've got them exposed to the sun like this, I'm going to be spraying them with plain RO water. In my summer, I have this orchid on my east side, on the shelving unit that I have there, behind a white curtain for most of the day, but very, very close to the terracotta floor, which makes it even hotter the moment the sun rises because that terracotta heats up fast. My plan for this repot is to bump it up a size, Take it from what I had there as a 10, I'm going up now to a 15 centimeter pot and I will be using large LECA. You can see that my previous LECA was a mix of large and small, but I don't want to be doing a mix anymore because the pot size now will increase the amount of water around the roots. For that reason, I'm only going to use large LECA so that I can compensate the two different variables, more water around the roots and not make it too soggy by using only large lecker. But what I am doing this time around in the smaller pot, it did only have one microfiber strand. Going into the bigger pot with larger lecker, I'm going to give it two microfiber strands so that I can make up for whatever moisture that I might be losing to, due to the size of the pot and only using large lecker. I'll make up for that with a double microfiber. And I'm going to fill up my pot with as much water as it can handle to make my loop float. Because when I start pouring my leka in, I would like my leka to gently fall around the roots as opposed to me throwing weight on them that they may not be able to take. Let's see, where are you headed? Straight in that direction. So I don't need any lecker at the base. I can just start filling around. See how easily that lecker just falls and rolls into place. And a little bit of a tease with the hands in there, fingers. Oh yes, this is nice. Feels good on my hands, I can tell you. That sun is starting to get nice and hot. There, now I can just give it a bit of a jiggle while it's in the water. This is plain RO water and settle the lecker all around the roots. Perfect, that was all done and dusted. How I fertilize this orchid is every single time the reservoir is empty when it is in active growth. When it is not in active growth, it just gets flushes with plain RO water. And I have to be a lot more diligent and not be so afraid of my cold winters so that I don't get these root tips to dry out again. One more thing, you can see how the roots and the pseudobulb sort of can contradict each other. It's kind of growing up and away. These roots are somewhat exposed. I can fill around there with small leka, which I will be doing after the repot or while I talk to you, maybe while I talk to you, makes more sense. But they shouldn't be dried out if once they're so used to a wet environment like this. Push comes to shove, I have my microfiber that you saw earlier, and I will definitely also keep that over in this area a little bit more to avoid any of this lecker drying out if I am not attentive enough and if hot winds arrive and would burn that root out. So this is a microfiber that I leave depending on where the roots are a little bit more exposed 
And then if I go around in water and I'm not flushing, I target the microfiber with my sprayer and just wet the microfiber. So as I mentioned in the beginning, I do not know if the leaf drop is normal. I would like to hold on to the leaves, it's a shame. However, if that is a thing of humidity, then I cannot help it. Mine will always only ever have two sets of leaves because I have such low humidity during the hottest months of the year, whereas where this one comes from, it would have very high humidity of anything above 70% on a regular basis. I don't have that. Light levels as well, being closer to the equator, it has 12 hours of light. I try to give it 12 hours of light when it is under my blurple lights in the winter. Not always guaranteed, but minimum of 10 hours is guaranteed. And in the summer, it gets daylight as long as there is daylight. I don't make any differentials there at all. I'm really looking forward to seeing the other videos, which are in the description below. Suli Charon and What's Up Orchids, thank you very, very much for doing your videos. This is a very interesting little orchid, and I look forward to seeing how yours are doing. Have you got any blooms? If you're interested to see how this one grows in other environments, in other setups, please go to the links in the description below. I would really encourage that. And let me just extend the invitation. If you have this orchid, if you grow this orchid, if you've bloomed this orchid, if you make videos and post to social media, not necessarily just YouTube, if, if, if all of these things you answer with yes, then please send me an email. My email is in the description below or leave a comment and say that you would like to take part in future updates on this orchid. I will put you on the list and then we will be in touch. In the meantime, mine now has to mature this growth. I'm hoping to get another bulb the size of this one. Maybe even bigger would be nice. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so very, very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.